And at this time, we have a special by Elena. That's why we're here, brethren. We have come to worship. We are um, coming up to July 4th, uh, Independence Day, and uh, so I wanted to talk about uh, freedom today. And we're going to go to Romans chapter 6. We talk about freedom, not when we look at the Bible and we're talking about freedom, we're not talking about freedom like we have in America, but freedom we have in Christ. And I'm going to read the complete chapter of Romans chapter 6. Just follow along as I read, and then we'll come back and, and look at some things, special uh, words and phrases that Paul talks about uh, here. In order, to be, in order to be free, there must be something we're free from. And so this is what uh, Paul deals with. Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse number 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? 
because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask now that you would give us understanding of what has happened as we put our faith in Christ and we are born again. Lord, help us to see what you have done in our lives and see what we need to do in our lives to honor you. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. Guide us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to notice some uh, special words and phrases that Paul uses here when he talks about... Um, uh, he has the, 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 it gives a, a picture of a, a kingdom or a, 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 a nation where somebody is ruling over others. Look at verse number six. And he uses this, these terms. He says, um, henceforth we should not serve sin. Serve sin. And then so there's the, the servitude there, the idea. Look at verse number uh, seven. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So now we see the freedom. First we were serving sin, now we're free from serving sin. Look at verse number 9. He says, um, Death hath no more dominion over him. Now dominion is that um, kingdom or that area of uh, authority. So he says, death no, doesn't have any dominion, doesn't have any uh, authority over Christ anymore. Look at verse 14, since we're on dominion. For sin shall not have dominion over you. So we can have death having dominion over us, or we can have sin, or both, having dominion over us. Look at verse number uh, 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. What does it mean to reign? It's like a king who is reigning over you. Somebody who is telling you what to do and you are following. And you have no control over yourself and they do. And that's what sin does. And that's what we want to look at. Well, Paul in this chapter, as he begins this chapter, he, uh, he asks a question. He says, what shall we say then? Well, the reason he asks that is because of what he said in chapter 5. And in chapter 5, he's dealing with the grace of God. And he's, he's uh, telling us that God's law uh, pointed out that we were sinners. And, but God's grace came along and says, here's a way out. Here, yes, you are, you, are, um, you are a sinner because the, the law shows that you're a sinner. It points out to you what God expects, and you can't do it. You haven't been able to do it, and you're going to continue to be uh, uh, disobeying, disobeying God. And he says, so, so because of that, God says, I'm going to do something for you. He says, you can't help yourself, so I'm going to work it out. And he gets sent Jesus Christ to die for us. And it was his grace that did that. So because of God's grace, he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And I think I mentioned this just recently. Some of you might not have been there. But does this make any sense? Grace, God's grace uh, for this man might, might be a lot of grace because this guy was a big sinner. He did a lot of things. He was a bad man, uh, been in prison 12 times, 
uh, still in prison now on the 12th time, and he's, he's done horrendous things, and God's grace is able to save that person. But then there's this person over here who's lived his life in a nice way, in a good way, and he's been a good person, but there's just these few little sins in his life. Now, because this man, this evil man, receives God's grace, God's grace, it seems like he's got a lot of God's grace because he was so evil. And this man has a little bit of God's grace because he doesn't need much. So what Paul is saying, he's, he's again, he says in, in uh, down in, uh, oh, where, what verse was it? I can't, I can't see it but he says I, I'm talking to you like a, like a human being not, not spiritually I'm saying these things to get you to understand the way a, a human thinks is this guy gets a lot of grace and this guy doesn't he says what should we say then should we continue in sin so grace we can get more grace should we just keep doing bad things so God offers more grace to us and he says, God forbid. And we know that that doesn't mean God forbids that. It means, no, no way. Don't, don't think like that. God uh, wants us not to sin. And he says, and he goes on, and this is what we're going to look at. God's grace uh, gives us uh, eternal life. God's grace uh, gives us salvation from sin through Jesus Christ. But because we are now under God's grace, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and he's talking to Christians, he's talking to people who know Christ, since we are under God's grace, uh, we're no longer condemned by our sin. So does that mean, you know, not, that, not that we're going to get more grace, but does that mean that I can just continue to sin because... I'm, I'm, uh, God's grace is, is covering over me? No. Again, it's not, uh, not, um, God forbid is what Paul, the way Paul puts it. So people, Paul, when he writes this, he's, he's recognizing the way people think. And I know what you're going to think. Since you're free in Christ, you're free to do as you please. He said, no. And that's what he's dealing with. God forbid. Verse 15, he points out the same thing. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? No way. No, don't even think like that. He tells us that we are dead to sin. In verse number 2, how, long shall, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So he gives the illustration and tells what happened in our lives. It, it happened before we were even born, but because we put our faith in Christ and we, we know that God forgives us of our sins, we recognize when we look back at what Jesus did when he died on the cross, we died with him. Our sins were on him. And so he says we are dead to sin. We are dead to sin, and we should no longer sin. It's not something that should be part of our lives. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What was the point of our salvation? Why did we accept Jesus Christ? Because our sin condemns us. And that's what he says in verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. So if the wages of sin is death then my sin, no matter how small or how big, should cause me to die. I should pay the death penalty for my sin. If I were to do that, it would take me how long to pay for my sin? All eternity. That means I'd never pay for it, never be done. But God took my sin that I should pay for and put it on, cross, on the cross with Christ. And when Christ died, my sins were there. I died with him. So I am dead to sin. The sin is paid for, but and, and the sin is paid for, and so that's why we recognize we put our faith in Jesus Christ. If I did not put my faith in Jesus Christ, I am guilty of rejection of God's gift, and that's why I would go to hell, because the sins are paid for. A person without Christ, a person who's never trusted Christ as Savior, 
does not have to pay for their sin. And that sounds funny, but Jesus paid for it. He paid for the sins of all people. And so a person who rejects Jesus Christ goes to pay their punishment of rejection of Jesus Christ. Because God said, here it is, and we don't get it if we don't accept it. But because of our sin, that's why we went to Christ. And so we should think in our own minds, in a human uh, Christian mind, I should not desire sin. Because that's the whole purpose that Jesus went to the cross. That's why Jesus died. It was because of sin. The reason for God's grace is because of sin. And God's grace is because of His love. When you think about it, I mean, when a, when a person who is truly born again, they have accepted Christ as their Savior, they, they are a new creature. Old things, the Bible says, are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why would we want to go back to the old thing? Why would we want to go back to the old sin for what Jesus paid for? And, and we know it. We, we sin. We still do that. But I don't think any of us really say, I... Boy, you know, I'm glad God uh, had Jesus die for me. Now I can sin and, and uh, it's all paid for. It's not, it's, it, 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 that's a stupid way of thinking, right? I'm sorry, brutish way of thinking. Paul says we are dead to sin. Look at uh, verse 7 again. For he that is dead is freed from sin. What can a dead person do? nothing and so he can't even sin so when we died with Christ it makes sense that we shouldn't be sinning now we are still human beings still alive we still have the sin nature so we are going to sin but uh, we died with Christ and we need to keep that sin nature dead dead person cannot do anything so if we consider ourselves dead then we won't Sin. Now look at verse 3 and 4 verses. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I know people use this and I've, I've never done it uh, as I baptize people. Some people, some pastors will, will, will baptize somebody and they'll say that uh, we, we are raised to newness of life. And considering this, speaking about our water baptism. And I've never, I, I, I read this and I read this and I read this, and I can't see water baptism in it at all. Uh, it's talking about when we're being baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Jesus said that we would be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And so when, when we are put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in, baptizing us, immersing us. And so he says, and if, you can, if you just think of it that way, so many of us as were baptized through the Holy Spirit into Christ, see, you, when you were born again, you were placed into Christ. It's not when you were baptized. Okay? So we are born, we are, we are uh, baptized into Christ, I uh, lost my place here. Um, we're baptized into his death. The whole point, Jesus died for us. Therefore, because of that, he says we are buried with him by that same baptism. The, the Holy Spirit comes on us, and Jesus was buried in the tomb when he died, after he died, and we went with him. Our sins went with him when we were buried. Buried, uh, and then he says uh, that, um, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, now we should walk in newness of life. When should we walk in newness of life? When when is a person changed from the old person to the new person? When they're baptized in water, or when they're uh, born again? born again spiritually we are, it's a new birth when the spirit of God comes in we are changed into a new person a new creature and so those old things he says are passed away and now we go on and live a new life for God so in verse 6 knowing this 
that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The reason he says shouldn't serve sin is because before we were born again, we were in bondage to sin. We were slaves to our own sinful nature. And when we put our faith in Christ, then we're no longer, he says that from now on, this henceforth means from now on, we should not serve sin. Don't let sin tell you what to do. Sin has no more hold on us. Being born again, yes, we still will sin. But we, as Christians, have the ability, through the Holy Spirit, to say no to sin. The world, without Christ, has no problem just continuing to sin because they can't say no. I saw, saw a movie, some, somebody asked, uh, you know, somebody in the, in the, the characters in the movie, the uh, lady says, listen, I, I want you to do something for me, but you're going to have to lie a little bit. Is that okay? <laughs> well, we know it's not okay, but what was his answer? Yeah, that's okay. And he went in and did what she wanted, but no, it's not okay. But the old nature, the old way we were says, hey, if I have to, I have to. It helps out the, the, the need. No, that's not right. Sin does, is, does not help us in any way. Sin harms us. And so we are to be dead to sin, and we are not to be serving our own sin nature. Look at um, Romans chapter 5 and look at uh, verse number 17. For if by one man's sin, one man's offense, death reigned. Death reigned. Death was king. Okay? Death is king to all people who still uh, have never trusted Christ as their Savior. The wages of sin is death, and they're on their they're living death right now. Much more, he says, for, for by one man's offense, death reigned by one, that one um, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we can reign, life will reign in us. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are alive in Christ. We have eternal life. When does eternal life begin for a person? At the time he's saved. Well, you could you could say at the time we're born, but uh, it's not it's not guaranteed. So, really, eternal life begins at salvation, and we have life, and death is not reigning in us. Look at verse twenty one. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So, sin reigned in our life which brought on death, now uh, Christ's grace, God's grace reigns through His righteousness in our life. Because of our faith, because of what we have done and accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So Paul tells us here that we are not to have uh, allow sin or death to have any authority over us. Look at again, verse number uh, 9, he says, Death hath no more dominion. And then in verse number 14, he says, sin shall not have dominion. That dominion is that controlling area around us. And neither sin nor death should be part of our lives. And he tells us that we are free. When we die, we died with Christ, we're freed from sin. Verse number 7, a, a dead man, um, he that is dead is freed from sin. So when we died with Christ, we're free from that bondage to sin and we are no longer a slave uh, to sin look over at uh, well John eleven twenty six is where Jesus says it he said if uh, he that believeth in him uh, is, has eternal life though he were dead yet shall he live so we, we are dead without Christ 
when we have Christ, we are alive. None of us, I believe none of us, desire to be a slave. Desire, at least we don't, we just don't desire to be a slave to a, a, a master who is evil. <clears throat> when uh, in 1865, Congress established what is called the, what is the 13th Amendment, the 13th Amendment uh, abolished slavery. Let me read what it says. And when we know we're, 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 when we, we abolish slavery, all of, automatically we think of, uh, how do I put it right, people of color. The, the people who were slaves back in the 1800s and 1700s, they were freed. And this is, this is what gave them their freedom. It says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. <clears throat> you can be in involuntary servitude if you've, create, if you've committed a crime and you've been convicted of the crime and they punish you by making you break rocks in a rock pile or something. But slavery was wrong. Even slavery to sin is wrong. We need to recognize that when Christ came into our life, we were freed from that bondage, just as if we were a slave uh, with chains on us, doing what our master told us to do. And our master in that case is sin. And the master sin, not, it's not Satan, okay? Satan influences us as sinners, but he doesn't make us sin. Uh, you know, remember Flip Wilson saying, the devil made me do it. Uh-uh. The devil doesn't make anybody do it. He doesn't have to, okay? We are slaves to sin, and we need to uh, recognize that it is evil to be allowing sin to control us. Patrick Henry, in his famous speech, said this, Is life so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of slave of chains and slavery. If I, if I, if we can have peace if we just buckle down and, and just let the King of England rule over us, and we'll be just do as he says, and it'll be peaceful. No, he's saying, listen, I'm not going to be a slave. That's why the end of his speech, he says, give me liberty or give me death. I'm not going to live like that. We are not to be living a life of slavery to sin. We are to be living a life uh, in freedom what God has done for us. And we are in a spiritual war. We can say the same thing that Patrick Henry said. He says, is life so dear or, or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of slavery to sin? Unless everybody else is doing it. I'll just go, go along with the crowd and do as they do so they won't be after me and say, what's the matter with you, Ken? Why, do you, why don't you just do this? It's not, it's not going to hurt you. Just do it. Listen, I don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like that. Okay, maybe we have some pressure from some people. So what? I'm free to not sin. They are not. Spiritual slavery is slavery. It's a living death. What did James say? He said, sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. If we live in sin or we allow people to influence us and we just go along with the crowd, we are in a living death. It's not a, 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 we're not, it's not a freedom in Christ way to live. Freedom in Christ means we're no longer in bondage to sin. It doesn't mean we're free to do as we please. I think we sang one of these songs. It, 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 it talked about freedom, but freedom with the rules that are around us. Freedom isn't to do as we please. If this country was, if every person in this country was given the freedom to do 
what they wanted, and there were no rules, there were no laws. What we have is what we call anarchy. No law. And that's chaos. Because nobody would have freedom. I'm, if I'm free to do as I please, I'm free to take your life. What does that do to you? It takes away your freedom. I'm free to take away your house. It takes away your freedom. You can't have, you can't have freedom without rules. And God has rules. He's not going to send us to hell because we break his rules. But he says, live like I want you to live. Do as I want you to do. Be like Christ. 2 Peter 2.19 says this, For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. That means if we allow a person to overcome us, he takes over, now I'm, I have to do as he wants. When I allow sin to take over, what am I doing then? I'm putting myself under sin, under my sin nature. Go to Rome, well, Romans 6, look at verse number 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. And it applies everywhere. But he's talking about sin. He says, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Who are we going to be servants to? Sin or God's righteousness? God's righteousness is where we should put our submission. Go over to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse number 34 Jesus answered them verily, verily now that means truly this is a true statement he says truly twice I say unto you whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin we don't, we don't have to say okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let sin tell me what to do all we have to do is commit the sin. Now, now what am I looking at? I did what sin wanted me to do. I became the servant of sin. I put myself under that uh, control, and I'm making myself no longer free. Go Look at Galatians. Galatians is a good uh, book to read about freedom in Christ. Galatians chapter 5 and look at verse number 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Now liberty in Christ is freedom from sin, freedom from the control of sin. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now you think, okay, why, why do you just throw in by love serve one another? He says, he says, don't use liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Well, the problem is sometimes we say, I have, uh, I have liberty in Christ, I have freedom in Christ, so I do as I please, and I then step on somebody else's toes because I've done something for myself, and I've hurt somebody else. So wait a minute. If I love, he says, by love serve one another. Now... <laughs> this reminds me of what happened this morning. I'll, I'll tell you about it. Now, in my mind, I, I'm, I need to look around. Listen, if I go ahead because I have freedom in Christ and I do this, what happens to these people? Oh, nothing. What about them? Oh, yeah. Hmm. I should have thought about that. Now, what? That's, that's walking circumspectly, looking around. That doesn't mean I can't see what who I'm going to hurt by sinning, so I'm just going to go ahead and sin. But looking around, and what I <laughs> what I thought about is this morning I walked outside and there was this big black cat out, out in the backyard. My wife had already she must have her back must have hurt later. I'm not sure, but she must have she went out and let her the chickens out of the pen. So the chickens were all running around, and we got five little chicks around with a with a mother, and. Uh, I walked out and, and that cat took off running from me and ran right through the chicks. And one of the chicks got scared and ran in the same direction as the cat. 
and I saw the mother hen and she flew across that yard right after that cat and uh, my wife said I didn't I, she didn't know that she would do that but she says you know I've, I've noticed that mother hen wherever she is she's always looking because she makes a noise and those chicks know exactly what to do but she's always looking around protecting her her chicks they're not even hers but <laughs> uh, but she's protecting them watching so that nothing hurts them you know we need to be watching so nothing hurts us we need to be watching so we don't hurt somebody else and that's what Paul is saying by love serve one another don't be using your freedom in Christ to do as you please an occasion to the flesh because you're thinking of yourself only not other people God is gracious and we have liberty but we should use our liberty to please him instead of pleasing ourselves freedom in Christ is freedom from the bondage of sin and we need to learn not to be a slave <coughs> at the price of our relationship with God a slave to sin means we're walking away from God we have freedom we have freedom in this country but this country still has rules and we follow those rules and we are free I can I can leave here and I can drive across the country and go to Maine if I want to I can go to Texas if I want to I'm I'll go to Texas but I'll go to I can go anywhere we're free I won't go to Mexico I might not get back but we are free in this country but we follow rules and God has rules and we need to be free not to sin that's what freedom is freedom away from the bondage to sin let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for your love thank you for what you've done for us in Jesus Christ Lord I pray that you would help us to remember these things about sin and being in bondage to sin because when we do when we submit to sin we are submitting as a slave Lord help us to recognize the freedom we have in Christ is a blessing from you that we can avoid sin as we look to you and seek your guidance and your help you can give us the understanding to say no to say no I don't have to serve sin it's over Jesus paid my penalty now I have life eternal life to live with Christ thank you Lord for your goodness I pray in Jesus name Amen